What up, though? I'm your host, Young Tone the Man, and this is the Black Shot Podcast. Let's get to it. Keep it going, you need to kill yourself. Don't do this shit, bitch. What up, though? It's your host, Young Tone the Man, and this is the Black Shot Podcast, episode 9. And you know, as we always do, three topics, two serious, one lighthearted, so we're going to kick this thing off. Um, black hair in schools. Uh, can anybody say the Crown Act? Uh, and that will cover black hair in schools, black hair in business, you know, the discrimination of black hair uh, across, the, across the spectrums of society in the United States of America. All right, so we're going to start this thing off, man. Um, with, a, with what I feel is a very interesting story to me. It's not an old one. Um, and, and it's definitely not an uncommon one. We wish it was, but it's not an uncommon one, and it shouldn't exist, though it does. Uh, a black five-year-old special needs child gets his hair cut and uh, by his teaching assistant at a uh, Gwinnett County Elementary School in the city of Logan, Rosebud Elementary. Uh, this young man has extremely long hair down to almost his buttocks, right? And the teaching assistant takes it upon herself to cut this boy's hair like grab scissors it's too long chop it you know throw it in a bag and send it home no note no no note beforehand no uh, calling the parents no hey let's have a parent teacher conference none of the responsible teacher stuff she just says his hair's too long Let's chop it off. Chop, chop, snip, snip. Throw it in the bag, send it home. Right? Now, that's fucking crazy to me. First off, that is not your child. Secondly, you had no authority nor permission to cut that boy's hair. Let's get that, let's get that understood. Third of all, why are you cutting the hair of other people's children when you're not a fucking licensed cosmetologist? Like, that part. You know what you're doing, lady. And you're not in a position to do that. Nobody gave you authority or permission or authorization to do so. And you know what the fuck you're doing anyway. Um, in addition to that, black people across the diaspora uh, view their hair in, uh, in a variety of contexts. One of the more prominent views of that is it is a symbolism and a source of power, strength, and identification. You can tell a lot about a person by the hair. Um, in in uh, many cultures across history, you could tell, especially on the continent of Africa, you could tell what tribe or family a person belong to by their hairstyle, hair color, you know, the ornaments in and on and around their hair. You could, that was all, that was also used in a lot of uh, Native American tribes, and it still is, you know, even a lot of Asian tribes. You go to South, or not even, not necessarily Southeast Asia, but you go across Southeast Asia, because I've been there a bit, and you can see different groups of people have different hairstyles. And different hair lengths um, and you know you can look at even at in, 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 a, in a current American context you could look at that and go oh uh, locks versus a fade or versus the the afro uh, versus the shag nine times out of ten you're not gonna go to a, a, a northern city you're not going to New York City, you're not going to Chicago, you're not going to Detroit, you're not going to Milwaukee, you're not going to Gary. Most of the time, they're finding somebody who's got a shag. That's a southern thing. You'll find that in parts of southern Louisiana, you'll find that in parts of uh, northern Texas. You might get some Houston, some, some Dallas, they, they real big on that. But that's, a, that's, that's more so of a southern regional thing, right? But everybody takes their hair seriously. You know, it's the same ideas as, as 
older men with bald heads. It's, it, it's becoming more of an expectation um, or more of a, a preferred look. Uh, so you can see the cultural relevance and importance of people's hair. Hell, the story of Samson and Delilah. For all you uh, uh, book uh, Bible reading folks or all you Greek mythology folks, the story of Samson and Delilah, Roman and Greek mythology tell that story, and so does the Bible and the Torah speak of Samson and Delilah, and even referenced in the Quran. So, and it talks about the, the, the strength and value of one's hair. We passed a whole bill about discriminating against people um, based on their hair or the presentation thereof. So the fact that you took it upon yourself to cut this child's hair with no authorization uh, and, and, and uh, permission and you don't have the subsequent qualifications to do so from a legal context, you out of line, lady. But on top of that, you, you traumatize this kid. You know, you know, what happens if, okay, say his parents come sue you now because that is being classified as a simple assault in the state of Georgia. That's the charge. They're charging this person with simple assault. Um, you know, as a, as a person who has, I got special needs people in my family, man. You know, two of my nephews are, are, are you know, they, they deal with um, variations of autism. And, you know, somebody that they don't know or somebody that they're not comfortable with or somebody who's not their parents, you know, you come and, and, and cut their hair, you're going to have a whole ass problem on your hands. <laughs> One of my nephews, you try cutting his hair, he liable to beat you up. Like, no cap. He, he's liable to put hands on you because you touching his hair. And, and, and that's, that ain't cool. You know, why, why, would you, why would you do that? Why would you have so much, you know, hatred or disdain or, uh, for someone else's appearance that you're going to go, you're going to go force them to change their appearance? You know, that's, 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 that, that's a violation of one's personal space. That's a violation of one's uh, cultural freedoms, religious freedoms. You know what I mean? Like, that's a whole problem. And consider it bastard. Um, but, yeah, so uh, the charge for this lady uh, is a, a simple assault. Um, when, when the principal was approached um, and, and asked about the situation, um, principal, who's a sister, by the way, um, uh, said that the teaching assistant would no longer be allowed to teach at that school and preferably in that in that county or in that state like you shouldn't be able to teach anywhere um, and you should get charged and 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 you know have to have to have to have to come up have to you know maybe sit down somewhere come out of your pockets a bit you know and you know for you know pay for that like you, you you know what I'm saying? I send my kids, my, my kids to school, and you cut their hair. Yeah, you you cut my kids' hair, I'm gonna come cut you, like straight up and down. That's that's how that's gonna work. Uh, Cause my daughter has my daughter has locks, and so does my wife. So if I go, so if I get a call saying they didn't cut my daughter's hair, I'm gonna come up there and I'm gonna cut the person responsible. Cause hey man, touch my children's hair if you want to. I'm gonna come touch you. And we 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 gonna have it just like that. If you don't like it, just two two real simple ways to solve their problem. If you don't want parents come touching, you don't touch their kids. If you don't want parents doing to you what you doing to you something doing something to you, don't do that to their children. People get real antsy and real and real adamant and real violent about their children because they're supposed to. That part. Um, so yeah, like that's that's crazy. Like we've heard of this before. Um, we've heard of, of, of a couple of different uh, little girls across Georgia, uh, Maryland, Florida. A couple of years ago, there was a boy 
a young man in the state of Florida at a prep school, and he had locks, and they told him he couldn't walk across the stage with locks. But he could attend class with locks like that. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, I can come to school with locks, but I can't graduate with locks. I can't walk across stage at a ceremony with locks. But when I was sitting in class, learning all the information, proving to you that I could read, write, regurgitate, and comprehend the information being taught, my locks wasn't a problem. Or were they? They might have been a problem back then, but you ain't had a gauze to say something. But now you want to institute this issue, institute this, 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 this rule, you know, this BS about my hair, my hair, my hair. Why do you hate my hair so much? I don't hate my hair. I love my hair. But why do you hate my hair? And why are you making the system work against my hair? What did my hair ever do to you? There was a story about a little girl who had braids in her hair. And they said that the girl's hair was a distraction. How was her hair a distraction? She's not playing with her hair. She's not messing with her hair. She's not constantly... Um, swinging her hair she's in her classroom doing her work you know she then dang that straight a student you know on a roll but her hair is a distraction she's clean she's presentable she smelled nice from the reports like she had no problems out of this student but all of a sudden her hair is becoming a distraction why because the other kids are more interested in her hair than, than the information being taught what are you doing as a teacher if you cannot keep the attention of your children? Maybe you need to evaluate your teaching methods. You need to evaluate your methodology on the presentation of information that you intend for these kids to read, write, and regurgitate to assess a certain level of competency and literacy in the given subject matter. If the students are more interested in the other students than they are in the information being presented. The problem is not the uh, the problem is not the students. The problem is the methodology of the presenter and the quality and the content of the information being presented. Fact. If you don't if you don't you don't agree, go ahead, get in the comment box. You know, yeah, feel free. Hit me up. I'll debate you on this subject. Proven fact. Like, you're not, you're not going to disprove my statement of if the children are more interested in the other children than they are in the information being presented. The problem is the information. The problem is the presentation. The problem is the presenter, not the information being given. I don't fall asleep in a conference uh, that has exciting and engaging and interesting subject matter and a good presenter. I'm going to stay awake. I'm going to pay attention. I'm not worried about what's on my phone when the information being presented is, is, is interesting and attention grabbing and the presenter is interesting and attention grabbing. Because if you're a great orator, you can get and hold people's attention and you have interesting information to pass on and you present it in a way that's going to get and hold their attention. But when you're a half-assed teacher and you're giving BS information out, whether the information is true or not becomes irrelevant if your presentation is terrible. I can't tell you how many classes I, I fell asleep in going through grade school because the presenter was boring. They weren't engaging. They weren't exciting. It wasn't interesting. It didn't get and hold my attention. It didn't grab me. It didn't resonate with me. It's not something that I found uh, important and relevant and I could apply. Give me something that's important and irrelevant and, and I can apply. And if, you're, and if you're trying to blame the students for there's, you're trying to blame the student that is paying attention and is actively engaged in the lesson being presented that they're the that they're the distraction or their hair is the distraction you fucking suck at your job and you need to do something else and if you're a fucking teacher hey man time for you to get a career change man uh you need to you need to stop teaching whatever subject matter that you're teaching and you need to go i don't know go Go write books on something else, man. Go sell gym shoes.
you know, uh, go go build a new basketball, you know, go go do something else. Uh, maybe maybe you should be a nurse and not a teacher, you know. Maybe maybe you should you know uh, be a be a scientific researcher. You're not a teacher because you can't get your kids to pay attention. You should you should seek some counseling on your methodology and your presentation because you're fucking tough. All right, so next topic is uh, religious freedoms and pro sports. So an African Muslim uh, football player, Idris Gaia, uh, refused to wear a rainbow jersey and supported the LBGTQIA community. Twitter and the league he plays for uh, both had a serious problem with his refusal to wear that shirt. Um, reports that he um, didn't play in that same game last year, and this is something that they do annually. Um, right around the same time frame, they wear rainbow-colored jerseys to su- in support of the LBGTQIA community and 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 the and the rights thereof. Okay, great. You know, as a league, you want to do that because you you want to show diversity and inclusion. And and I understand that, right? Um, thoroughly understand that. I understand that from an American standpoint. I understand that from a human standpoint. I understand that from a uh, from an athletic standpoint, from an organizational standpoint, from a political standpoint. Like I get it. But can we say religious infringement though? That part. As a Muslim, I thoroughly understand that Islam teaches against homosexuality and and, and, and the lifestyles thereof. Whether I agree or not is not what we're talking about. I understand it. As an American, I thoroughly understand the implications of the rainbow, and I use that in quotations, um, when related to sports, especially as a pro- at the professional level, right? So we support many things uh, at the professional level uh, when it comes to uh, ideologies and, and, and you know diversity and inclusion. Right, everybody's asking for their piece of the pie to be supported in at in a professional sports arena because we're all people. You can't have an athlete who's not a person. Um, so we want to support the the ideologies and the and the perspectives and demographics of people. Right. So, as a Muslim, I get it. Um, I get his position. Um, as an American, I get it. You know, it, it, I, I understand. I do agree that attempting to publicly shame a person for refusing to support the life decisions of others, not who, not bad mouthing them, nor uh, nor the decisions going against their decisions, um, nor deciding to go against their decisions, right? Um, but just merely disagreeing. Or, 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 you know, or refusing to participate, um, you bad mouthing me or publicly shaming me for disagreeing with your life decisions, um, without me, you know, you know, go, you know, without me publicly shaming you or 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 or, or bad mouthing you or slandering you. But for you to do all of that to me merely because I refuse to support your life decisions is, is, is just wrong. It's just bad. Like, why? You know, if I don't support a thing, why do you got to drag me through the mud because I don't support the thing? Newsflash, I don't fucking have to. We are all people. Yeah, we live in relativity, and we are all individuals. So we are all of a uh, uh, sound body and mind. So with that, this is an adult. This is a grown man who who plays a sport for a living. And he agreed to play the sport in accordance with the league's rules. But because he decides he's not going to play in this game, in this one event, he's not going to participate in this event, in this event where you're requiring him to wear a rainbow jersey that supports the LBGTQIA community, you understood the brother was Muslim when you hired him. 
And if you understand anything about Islam, you know they don't agree with that. It, it, it just is. You know, it's not, it's not whether, whether, whether that's right or wrong, that's, that's your opinion. But it is what it is. And rather than come out and, and you know, and hoot and holler and slander you and slander people in the LBTQIA community, he just simply said, I'm, I'm not playing. I'm not, I'm, not wearing, I'm not wearing a shirt and you can't make me. It's against my religious beliefs. And if you got a problem with that, something's the matter with you, my dude. That's the same thing as telling as, as, as a Jewish as, as 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 telling a Jewish person as telling the Jew as, as telling a Jewish person, hey, um, we're gonna wear these special edition jerseys uh, sponsored by Mercedes. And they like, nah, I ain't with that. So why? Because I'm a Jew. And as, as, as Jews, we don't agree with the Germans. And the Germans did all of this terrible stuff to us. So we, 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 don't, we, we don't support the Germans. So I don't support Mercedes Benz. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, it's, you know, it's, 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 the, it's, that, it's that equivalent to say, hey, man, I don't support that. I don't support that group or I don't support that entity. So... I'm not going to badmouth them. I was just like, hey, man, I don't, you know, I don't support them. And I got a legitimate reason why I don't support them. So I'm just not going to participate in that event. You know, if, if, if refusing to participate in the game is in your contract and it, and it comes with a fine via your contract, then, you know, that's, that's what that is. But you you gonna bam off this dude because he didn't want to wear the rainbow jersey when we all know what the rainbow jersey represents and we know that islam doesn't support that like that is an infringement of this man's religious beliefs and you got a problem with that first of all i need you to go do some reading secondly why you want to why why you want to infringe upon this man's religious way of life because he don't agree with somebody else's way of life and he's not infringing upon their way of life by, by doing what he's doing, he's not infringing upon somebody else's way of life. He's merely saying, I'm going to stand over here and be quiet and stand out the way because I'm not supporting that. That part. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, that, that is, that's crazy to me, right? That's crazy. To me. But they do it, and it's, and it's infuriating. It is, and that is, that is, that's, that's, that's infuriating, man. As a as a black man, there are certain I, there are certain things that that I don't take kindly when people do to me, say to me, and um, that comes from a cultural perspective. But as a Muslim, there are certain things I don't take kindly to when people do or say to me, and that comes from a religious perspective. And if I don't want to support a thing and I, and, and I tell you, hey, man, that's against my religious beliefs, and you can go find that in doctrine across the spectrum of that religion, then you have no choice but to shut up, respect it, and move on. That part. If you don't like it, so the fuck what? too bad you know you, you you like that like religious freedoms and sports is always a crazy is always a, 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 a interesting topic to me because everybody expects you to be all about the team regardless of you know everybody gave LeBron you know the 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 the, the middle finger proverbially because he left uh Cleveland and went to Miami and in the words of D.L. Hugo, motherfucker you ever been to Cleveland uh, so you know it's it, it's, it, it's, it's not I'm going to give everything to the team it's at the end of the day I'm still a person and as a person I have perspective as a person I have views as a person I have um, beliefs 
and to infringe upon those because and to infringe upon those because I don't support this this organization or that organization or this concept or that concept or this uh, lifestyle or that lifestyle. Motherfucker, I don't have to. I don't. Legitimately, I don't. And this brother doesn't either. Just as just as y'all have an opinion on whether somebody should wear, you know, white clothes after Labor Day or whether or not you should eat your dessert before your main course or whether or not people should spank their kids. This brother's got a his brother's got an opinion. It doesn't make anybody's opinion more valid or more uh, valued or more important or less than in anybody else's. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody got one and they all stink. And we have laws in place about uh, the infringement upon religious rights and freedoms. Now those very country to country, but they still exist. And this fear that people have about Islam is rooted in nonsense and propaganda and this is another um, situation that shows you that people fear Islam out of ignorance and misinformation and they try to prosecute people uh, in the court of public opinion and through legal loopholes with these types of situations. He doesn't wear a rain he doesn't want to wear a rainbow jersey unless it's in his contract that he has to, then whatever. You know, but it's a thing. And people want to drag him on Twitter and social media and, and the league had a problem with it and all this other jazz. Hey man, if there's a fine for sitting out of the game, regardless of the why, okay, cool. If he sits out the game, he pays the fine. But to get up there and drag this man and publicly shame and slander him because he didn't want to support whatever the community was and it's against his religious beliefs to do so, that's, you sound stupid and you have poor moral character. You know, asking a Muslim to support LGBTQIA, knowing that Islam teaches against that, is foolish. It, it just is. You know, um, that's like, I don't know, you know, asking, you know, somebody of a different religion to support something that their religion is blatantly against. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to support this thing that I know your religious beliefs tell you not to support. And getting mad at you when you like, nah, I ain't with that. That's crazy. Like I said, you knew the brother was Muslim when you hired him. He, I'm sure he told you about it. I'm sure this has come up before. According to reports last year, he had an ailment, so he sat out there again. Now he just like, nah. And even if he wasn't Muslim before, he turned Muslim before this game. So it's not like it's a, it's a, um, a, 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 a propaganda or a marketing scheme. It's like, hey man, this is what this man believes. So let him believe it. Now if he's running around, you know, hooting and hollering, we ain't supposed to do this and he, and this is bad, and this is wrong, and, and, and trying to slander the LBGQIA community, that's one thing. If he's running around beating people up for being in that community, that, that's a completely different conversation. But this brother like, mm, I'm going to sit out this game because I'm not wearing that jersey. And y'all losing y'all minds about it. Man, get out of here, boy. You sound dumb. That part. All right, so... Uh, last topic for the day, as always, there's something more lighthearted. The seduction of the ice cream truck. 
Now, as a kid, I grew up with ice cream trucks. I had a cousin named Malik, and the local ice cream truck driver's name was Malik. So once they figured that part out, we would get discounted ice cream often, right? It was cool, right? The ice cream truck, they played that goofy song um, that has a very tumultuous history. You should read up on the ice cream truck song. Um, but they played that goofy song, and you knew the ice cream truck was coming, and everybody lost their minds. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream, right? Like, yeah, like people lost their minds when the ice cream truck came coming down, right? You know, you you yelling. Like, Eddie Murphy did a song, did a, did a whole skit about this in the 80s. We were still losing our minds about the ice cream truck in the 90s. Yeah, in the early 2000s, kids are still losing their mind about the ice, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. Come on, can I get an ice cream truck? You know, and, and, and many, many companies capitalized on that desirability of the ice cream truck. You know, uh, the, the Choco Tacos. And when, when WWE now was back, WWF, they even had the WWF ice cream sandwich bars. Like, so you could get the ice cream sandwich on the stick and you would get them imprinted with your, uh, with your favorite wrestler and they would come with these collectible cards that you could only get in the ice cream bars, right? That part. You know, Hagen dazs got into the ice cream truck business to where you could get the Hagen dazs ice cream bars, the Klondike bars. What would you do? Woo! You know what I'm saying? For a Klondike bar, that type stuff. You know, Mr. Softy. Mr. Softy got big with the ice cream truck boom. Like, so what made, so my question today is, what made the ice cream truck so desirable? Was it the song? Was it the, the, the limited access? Was it the curbside assistance? Cause they came to you, you ain't had to go to the store. Like what made the, the ice cream truck so desirable? Because whether you got the Hagen Dodge bar or the Klondike bar or the Icy or your vanilla cone from the Mr. Softy truck or you went to the store and got it, it was the same fucking ice cream. The same, the same uh, ice cream sandwich the ice cream cookie sandwich that had the chocolate chip cookie with the vanilla ice cream in the middle. Same company, same brand, same logo that I could buy from the Mr. Softy truck. I could go buy at the Kroger or I could go buy at the Myers or I could go buy at the Farmer Jack. That's some Detroit shit. You got to go way back for that. But I could go to the grocery store and buy the same ice cream. But what made getting it from the truck like, oh my God, it's the thing is to get it from the ice cream truck. And my second question is, um, are ice cream trucks still a lucrative business? Are they still relevant? I see them every now and then. But, you know, like what, you know, is, is it from a, from a, from a uh, business perspective, is it still a lucrative investment? Is that still, you know, something that's going to bring you, uh, you know, a nice amount of cash flow is that is that still going to be a, 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 a constant money maker is that going to give you some some valid profit i ain't talking you know four five six percent you know you it's going to bring you you know a hundred you know one between one and five hundred dollars a month like can i make a living off an ice cream truck you know can i can i in today's economy you know if i opened up an ice cream truck business can I ride through the neighborhood and, you know, make, you know, $1,000 plus, you know, on, 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 an, on, on selling ice cream out the truck? Is that still a lucrative business? Because in the 90s, hey man, summertime, Detroit, you, you clean house. You know, you went and you loaded up you probably had two thousand dollars worth of merchandise in your truck and by the time you you know you get out there you start rolling at like 10 kids is outside you start rolling at 10 you were you rolled from 10 you know you you did a shift you rolled up and down the blocks of the neighborhood from 10 o'clock in the morning to four in the afternoon right Instead of doing a nine to five, you say say you did a ten to six, right? You did an eight hour shift. 
in the 90s, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. You know, hell, from from ninety to from ninety to two thousand. You know, you roll you rolled out, you pulled an eight hour shift, you could clear two grand worth of merchandise. And you know what I'm saying? And, and and your profit margin, you you're making, you know, you you you're making, you know, a, a good profit. You're making thirty five, forty five cents on the dollar. You know, and then depending on where what neighborhood you what neighborhoods you you serve and 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 your 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 wholesale price up front, you might have been making fifty five, anywhere from fifty five to to ninety five cents on the dollar. You know, you go buy you a gallon, you go buy your you know, you go you go buy you a gallon of vanilla. Gallon of vanilla say costs you cost you six dollars for a gallon of vanilla right and you selling it and you selling it uh uh you know uh a, a dollar one scoop was a dollar you get the cone and the scoop for a dollar right that's six dollars for a gallon and then you probably pay three dollars for for a 30 pack of cones so we're going to round with, with, with sales tax. So we're going to round it to $10, right? For every gallon of ice cream and 30 cones, you to make 30 cones, you pay $6, right? And then you might have charged a dollar for the cone and 25 and 50 cents for every extra scoop. Hey, man, let me get three scoops. Boom. That's a dollar for the cone and the scoop, 50 cents for every extra scoop. Boom, boom. You got three scoops. That's $2, right? You already made a third of your profit on your, on, on your gallon already. And you ain't took but three scoops out that mug. So, you, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, if those were the numbers roughly, that was the ratio, right? You're making, you know, for every dollar, you, you're making a, you know, a, you're, you're 125% profit at that point, roughly, right? You know, for every dollar you spend, for every dollar you spend, you making 225 that's a hundred twenty-five percent profit, my guy. Like you, you, you going, you, you over doubling up. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you went from, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you took a ten dollar investment and you turned out to, you know, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty, sometimes forty-five dollars. So you, you all profit at that point, sure. And then you adding in, you know, your, your ices. You go to the, you you go to the grocery store and you buy a thirty rack a thirty pack of ices and it's dollar ninety nine and you selling them jokes and you selling thirty of them for fifty cent a piece dollar ninety nine they fifty cent a pop you spent Michigan sales tax was six cent on the dollar right anything over seventy five cent anything seventy five cent or higher so you spent a dollar ninety nine for a thirty pack. That's two dollars and twelve cent, right? Uh, no, I'm sorry, two dollars and eleven cent. That's two eleven. You spend two dollars and eleven cent, and you selling them for fifty cent a piece, right? And you got a third. That's fifteen dollars. You spent two dollars and eleven cent to make fifteen dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, that's that's one hell of a profit margin, right? And you might have did that. And you, you know what I'm saying? You might have achieved that 10, 12 times in a day just off ICs. So, you know what I'm saying? But that's, that was the 90s, though. And you could have probably ran, you could have probably ran that same, the roughly that same profit margin, you know, where you're making, you know, 200, you know, uh, any, anywhere from 125 to to 400 percent profit on on ice cream right you know before before your but before taxes or, or shall i say before your deductions for your your the cost of renting your truck if you was renting it or the cost of gas right your insurances yada 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 
you know, you just just off the product alone, you might have been making, you know, anywhere from 125 to 400 percent profit just off the product. You know, your take home, you know, if you got a, if you if you had a good business going, you know, and you was uh, sole proprietor, you, you use a use a one man band. You know, you could have been making, you know, your take home might have been, you know, 175 to 250 percent profit. Because the rest of that had to go to, you know, your gas and your insurances and all of that jazz on a monthly basis. So your monthly, you know what I'm saying? Like your monthly take home from your, from your ice cream truck, was, was, your business was good. You know what I mean? I don't know if you necessarily support, you necessarily, you know, carried a, 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 a family of four strictly on an ice cream in, on an ice cream truck income. But, you know, if that's a side hustle at that rate, that's, you clear major profit at that point. Especially if you, you pulling, you know, you loading up and clearing, you, you clearing out, you know, Two thousand dollars worth of merchandise in a day. You do that every day for a week. My God, like you, you paying the bills in the nineties with a with a with with a family of four. You paying you 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 looking good. Especially if you if if that's one of multiple incomes. But I'm 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 just saying no. Um, is 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 the ice cream truck business still a lucrative business in today's society you know with with companies like 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 cold stone and baskin robbins you know what i'm saying with them coming out with hagen dodge getting being in all the major grocery stores and and and, and getting into the mini marts you know what i'm saying with the with the with the rise in in cost of living the rise in food prices you know, is that is that still a lucrative business? Food trucks are still a lucrative business, especially for industrial areas where they got short shorter lunch times because they got to get back to work. You know, and, and and their working conditions cause cause them time restraints on getting out to go to lunch. Food trucks are still a lucrative business. You know what I mean? Like you you pull up you pull up to a work site and. You know, you pull up curbside to a, to, a, to a construction site. Now, that job may last seven, eight, nine months a year. But, you know, you run a you run a food truck and you serve burgers and dogs. Hey, man, they ain't got to be that great. They just got to be constant and available. Bruh, you got, you know what I'm saying? You serving burgers and dogs. What's your toppings? Lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle, ketchup, mustard, barbecue sauce, bacon, cheese. You know, throw some, throw some sauerkraut on there and some fried onions and psh, you in there. And you going fan and you going fancy if you got jalapenos, flavored mustard, sriracha sauce, you know. And you can upcharge if you got, hey man, we got a home, we got a homemade jalapeno mustard. You can upcharge for that. You know what I'm saying? Like chili, upcharge for the chili. Especially if it's fancy. Oh, I got, man, I got a seven bean white. I got, I got a seven bean chicken chili. Seven bean chicken chili. What on a burger? On a dog? By itself? You know what I'm saying? So food trucks are still lucrative in today's economy. What about the ice cream truck? You know what I'm saying? And and, and I'm, I'm gonna get off my I'm gonna get off my soapbox on that. But yeah, man, that's today's episode. Um, like I say, three topics as always. We talked about black hair in schools. Uh, we talked about uh, religious freedoms and, and professional level sports. Um, and we talked about ice cream truck. The ice cream trucks to a lucrative business. That part. Treat the comment box like the penalty box. Get in there and get the fans moving. Let's hear what you got to say, my baby. This is your host, Young Tony Man. It's the Black Shot Podcast.
What up, dog? I'm at your neck, son. <laughs>